Hello there, I decided to recover the build I started the game with. I have a very similar build improved with legendary perks, the same exact weapon I was using from level 1 up to level 108 and the best armor for stealth gameplay. There will be few videos and for the first one I want to run a silo to show the best efficient way to do it without cheating for any stealth build. You will need a nuclear keycard on you, 30 circuits and 90 steel in your stash box not on you. The launch code will be provided by a website, I will leave a link down below. We are in silo, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie doesn't matter, they are identical. I will not cut anything through the whole run, but to make it faster I will accelerate some parts where I check my health, hacking terminals, picking locks, destroying mainframe cores, etc etc. And in general it will be 30% faster than normal speed. I will not use any damage buffs, my weapon is crafted, the plan for stealth suit is a quest reward or can be bought for gold bullions, so let's begin. First you need this keycard, it can be found here or in another place, time to time you will find it at the same exact spot. To kill robots or not it's completely up to you, through the whole run. Second, you need to get your biometrical data recorded, so you go to this room, make sure that there is no one behind you, maybe wait a little bit and use this automatic machine or whatever it calls, because for a moment you will be out of sneak mode. Third, you need to get back to the room where I found a keycard and use the terminal to fabricate a new one with your biometrical data. Don't forget to pass it first through the cutter reader. The robots don't have enough perception to detect you, but tourists do, and sometimes better destroy them. Now I'm going back to the merchant room, looking back to make sure that no one is after me, not like chasing me, but let's say making its programmed route. To access the terminal, you need to access the sneak mod as well, so watch out. Here choose the second option, to fabricate biometric ID, and go down the hall to activate it using one of two card receivers you see. It doesn't matter what slot you pick, they are identical. Now proceed to the very first room with elevator and go through the grid to the next location. You need to access the reactor room where you can repair it or use shortcut picking a level 3 lock and hacking level 3 terminal. Prepare your perks or the legendary muscle infiltration perk before because of radiation. Once more, you don't need to kill all robots here, they can detect you only if you are being very close to them for a few seconds. Stealth suit has the best possible radiation resistance, but I use rat shield to increase it even more, because I have like 14 hit points. I'm not sure actually if it helps and maybe there is a limit of radiation resistance. If you know, there you have a comment section. I need to clear out the area just a little bit, because everything here can insta kill me, plus radiation. Ok, now it's time for a shortcut. It saves us up to 2 minutes, but if you love to repair pipes, check the quest markers. You need to stop the reactor, repair everything and reinitiate it. Simple. Of course you would probably love more the photo mod glitch to make the whole run in 6-8 minutes or whatever it takes, but at least once you gotta do a full run without cheats. To destroy tourists here is important, because whenever you try to access any terminal, chow sneak mode. Here is a good example of what happened if you forget to take down a turret. Eh, the only time when something has spotted me in the silo. As you have noticed, I am playing without interface, it looks more realistic this way, so let's call it realistic mod. Of course, I will not make all my videos this way, because I am trying to share my experience with whoever watches them. To be able to play without interface, you need mostly to listen and keep an eye on mobs reaction, whenever you attack them or just approach them. Now you need to visit the control room in order to destroy some mainframe cores, prepare your explosive weapons to make it faster. If you don't have any, better to destroy all tourists you see, because it takes a little bit longer to destroy them manually, I mean mainframe cores, not turrets. So here how it can be done, aim with your explosive weapon and BAM! Too sad I don't have any, but I tried gamma gun just out of curiosity. 
With ballistic weapon you can do it as well, but it takes a while. In my case, I will do it manually. To get the entire job done, I need like 3 minutes. So let's talk about something else while I do my best here. For example, about this channel and what I've been through before. I mean, Fallout related. I started to play Fallout 76 after I had finished Fallout 4, uh, actually twice. The second time I tried to complete the main quest with the railroad game, but the quest was backed out. I had been playing in survival mode and there was no way to activate the console to cheat. The only way around was to switch to arcade, cheat through quest line to pass all backstages and uh, get back to survival through the console. But even this process with skipping stages was bugged. Finally I finished the game with Institute for the second time. Anyhow I completed all quests possible for Fallout 4 and checked out how the 76 is doing on YouTube actually. I had done it before and actually have never saw anything positive about the game. I'm stick with Bethesda for like 18 years now and I completed their games multiple times. All official DLCs. DLCs. A lot of not official DLCs, or let's say custom patches. And all their games have bugs and are fully exploitable. If one script triggers another one and there is a chain or chains of scripts, be sure something will happen sooner or later, especially with custom mods. That is why I started Fallout 76 being well prepared to face all bugs and it wasn't so bad actually. I finished all quest lines in about two weeks, maybe two and a half because we were under lockdown in Argentina and I'm in the group of risk. The vendors were switched off and loot wasn't that great. That is why I did all quest lines with the stealth suit and this very gun. Up to level maybe 108 I was one shooting everything I saw. Save these little bosses like Behemoth, a cave of a hawk, Scorch Beast, Ship Squatch and some big animals like Fog Crawler. But I even didn't find them a lot. Mainly I was nuking white spring for flex and farming materials because I bought Fallout first for scrap box. It was just for a month, but you know how it works. Now mobs are tougher because their level has changed. My character are weaker because the damage formula has been changed. But I still can use the same exact gear and almost same build to run silo without any problem like I did 5-6 months before. And the funniest part of it, you can use this gun from level 1 and they are everywhere, so you will never have a problem to open all mods very early, save for prime receiver I suppose. Ok, back to our silo runner. I finally destroyed all my frame cores and now it is possible to proceed to another location. If you are first timer you will get lost here, <laughs> but we all did I guess, so just be prepared to explore other locations. Maybe you will find something interesting. Now you need to prepare perks for picking locks and hacking terminals for the last time. It will help to save some ammunition for the queen or whatever you are about to nuke, maybe your friend's camp. Anyway, what I am about to do is fully optional and you can skip it and give a fight. But I am a lazy ninja from movies and I love to do this every time I can. You can go there and fight some robots or there is a possibility to remove targeting restriction for turrets and they will shoot everything. Let's do it. There is no need to wait until all robots will be destroyed, but if you want to make yourself a coffee or have another special need, there you go. You will need to destroy only two turrets, so hide in a shadow and take them down like a pro ninja from movies. I am not sure, but I think that dark places make you more sneaky. I have noticed this back in the days, but never tested it out properly. When you have done with turrets, it is time to collect 15 damaged mainframe cores and then repair them nearby, or you can try to find untouched ones in this location. It's up to you. The fun fact is that first you had to destroy them to open the door and now you need to install them to open the door. They look kinda the same, so why we couldn't use old ones, but okay, it's a part of the game. 
check that you have all of them and now it is time to repair. The beauty of crafting or repairing things in Fallout 76 is that you don't need all crafting materials on you. They will be taken from your scrap or stash box. Get to this room and be sure that there's no one around because you will need to abandon to sneak mod once more for like 15 seconds or so. Whenever you're ready. Okay, let's rock. You need to press craft, quest items, mainframe cores and spam E and space on your keyboard like you hate it. Faster you do it, better. If you don't have enough circuits or still don't worry, you can find all 15 mainframe cores here. First time I did the quest I found like 12 of them and then I just gave up and crafted 3 more. After you install all 15 mainframe cores, you can open the last door on your way to launch room through the terminal. Have a good look to be sure they are all there and go on. You need to press E or space 3 times and then tap or escape without waiting any longer. It can save you time and life of your character. You can run through some locations like here, but you need to have some experience first. I mean, I did this quest like 400, maybe 500 times I suppose because there was nothing much to do in Fallout 76 for a good amount of time. Of course, I don't want to say that I do it the most honest way, but in my case it's all about timing. So I need to launch my first nuke at 4, maybe 5 pm to have deal more damage with Mr. Seldmanberg, because it works at night. And it helps to a lot of players as well, because they use more or less the same build, and faster we take her down, faster I can do another silo. With Mr. Fuzzy character I do the same, though I don't care that much about dealing more damage myself at night, because it is another build, but you got the idea. Faster you can do it, faster you can do another one. But if you go first time, try to start at noon. It will take some time, but you will be at lunch silo more or less at 6 pm, maybe later. And it is the only location where you need to fight to make it faster. Hmm, nice. To make it here, you gotta destroy all tourists you see. Two Assaultrons and Robobrain, no matter what she says. Switch music on, because it can help you feel a very important person, because you are about to nuke some part of United States of America. I question myself, how the US government feels about this game? Don't forget to actually kill two Assaultrons, because they or one of them will be there for you whenever you get out of sneak mode to start launch prep works. And in general they are tougher and use stealth, so it can be tricky with them. Whenever you are ready, approach the terminal and choose the last option you see. Then press escape or tab and back to your comfy stealth mode. Now, if you have a good weapon, there is no problem with the fight, but the trick is that you need to keep alive only one friendly robot to make the process go in. And whenever he is down, you will need to activate a new one, so basically you can do the whole run without killing robots. Only few tourists, I guess. I suppose this video will be the longest one, and let's speak about this channel. I started YouTube mainly because I tried a lot of things in Fallout 76 and if you do something for a long period of time, you can understand how it works and share your knowledge. During the quarantine in Argentina from March 18, pretty much up to mid of August, I spent a lot of time in the front of my computer playing the game. After finishing Fallout 4 in survival mode, this one looked like walk in the park. So I have never struggled with the game and never spoiled my time so much watching any videos in YouTube. Heck, I have almost never died because of Fallout 4, when you can easily lose a few hours of gameplay if someone killed you. And I thought that mobs here are way tougher actually. After I finished all quest lines, I started to look over internet what I can do more and found a Reddit website I've never used before. People were complaining just about everything, it actually happens the same exact way with every online game. The funniest thing that you can see is the same exact topic like 10 times in a row or maybe with one or two in between. Someone just wrote about that, why do you need to write the same exact thing one more time. Now I try to respond politely to all comments, because I understand that is important, but anyway. 
The whole my life I work with robots or machines, making blueprints or doing something related to them. Fully technician and no need to communicate with people. Speaking of the gameplay and game style, I wouldn't call myself a skilled player because I'm not good at playing any PvP shooter. Sometimes it is because of lagging and server time response, but I don't try to make excuses. The fact is that I'm not good because in general my reaction is slow. With scripted PvE games it's way easier, and basically it's all about what to do at the moment. Know your enemies, play their weaknesses and you will be successful. So my channel is all about how to and of course I wouldn't use an energy explosive weapon to explain how to solo a new boss. My vids for casual players who started recently or don't have the best possible gear. Almost all weapons I use I bought in vendors for caps. Even bloody 2525 fixer I bought for caps. So if I can, why you wouldn't? I started to grab videos when daily ops came alive and I actually had asked for something like them few times on reddit way before it happened. I don't want to say that Bethesda heard me and made them because I had asked but it was pretty much a coincidence. I sold every daily op with very different weapons starting with a pipe gun and the last one was with bloated explosive versus vampire explosive LMG. Then some solos versus bosses and now I'm looking forward to cover up all builds the game can offer. Now you are watching a stealth sniper rifle build with no legendary gear and I almost done here without being spotted. Keep in mind that I have only 8 hit points and very low damage or energy resistance to tank a lot. Someone finds me and it will be a one shot. Another category of videos I want to do is challenges. I love them so much. Maybe it will be a thing one day, but any suggestions are welcome now. For let's talk videos I supposed to say something about Bethesda new features and changes, I'm not a huge fan of how they want to present us a new gear coming in December. I think that crafting legendary items is the best option. That is why I don't buy trash and rusty pick on daily basis. Only legendary models. Even with 25% off I don't want to waste time anymore. I actually grabbed a video with 5 Nocturnal rolls out of 7, but somehow deleted it. Well. No more complaints for today. Better to talk about future content. As I said, for now it will be a mix of builds and guides, mostly for casual players. Of course, I can help you out with a build if you upload its full version on Nukes Dragon website. But I'd rather make a video so everyone can see my suggestions and critique them. Speaking of frequency, for now it takes up to 12 hours to make a 6 or 7 minute video. And the current one I've been doing more than 24 hours. This is why there will be a gap of 3 days I guess. But I could not present a card version. This is a proof that you can still do this quest without legendary gear, without using any games, steam packs and never been spotted by mobs. The only thing that you need is to understand how it works and if you don't have time because of your job, social life, family or in other games here I am to make it easier for you. And I hope it helps. Back to our solo runner. I'm trying to reactivate as many friendly robots as possible. Though with a single shot rifle it's not that easy, so better to guard only one robot. Try to always shoot at weak spots or disable a visual sensor to help them lose perception. For Mr. Gatsy and Robobrain it is the same exact spot, so technically headshot or for Mr. Gatsy eye shot is the best option. The torso of Protectron or Aceltron is less protected than their head, so better to shoot them at torso or area between legs and torso. Never be very close to their dead bodies, because they can explode. Sometimes you can even hear that something is happening before explosion. Sentry bots or any legendary ones explode always, just stay away from them and see where their body go or loot them fast. At that moment in the game I already did less damage, because it was a day and Mr. Sadman works only at nights. The best perk for Nocturnal Commander build, I can tell. Anyway, let me show you my perk loadout, because we are getting closer to the end. Here everything is pretty standard. I used Rifleman perk instead of Commando and Sniper instead of Concentrated Fire. If you use Watts, equip last one. Dodge under agility and ricochet under luck are the best option in my situation. And finally, suppressor under charisma is more important than tenderizer. 
but I left it that way. To be able to sneak like that, you need to boost your agility with food and meditations. 23 will be enough. Keep in mind that stealth suit is way better than any set of armor if you're talking about sneaking. And remember how quickly that turret lost me when I was hacking a terminal. It is the best option for no what stealth build. So what can I say before it is done? You can get a hunting rifle and mod it like you want almost at the start of your journey in Appalachia. Less shots you need for mobs, more healthy your weapon will be. And for now, stealth attacks is the best way to kill mobs fast. Of course, you should never ever try this weapon at the scorched earth or a colossal problem events. Only automatic weapons, if you play on public servers. Speaking of armor, I will still go with Unyuten because it helps to level up faster. But whenever you do a right quest for settlers, you will get a plan for stealth suit. It breaks fast, I would say. But the idea is never get shot. If you have never tried to run a silo, you should give it a try. As you see, everything is very simple. And you have a possibility to make someone leave the server. Actually, up to free someone's. Because you have free silos. And it all depends if they were used before. After every lunch, it stays closed for 3 hours on the same server. And your personal cooldown is 1 hour across all servers, I guess. So you can launch 3 nukes in a row. Then change server and launch 3 more. We are done here. My health and my everything else. Silo without any effort. Well, thank you for watching, it is so awesome that you do it, I'll see you later.